I was a cast member at Walt Disney World for five years. I was asked by two elderly furries if I often went underneath the Magic Kingdom castle to join in the adult playrooms. And this is a cast member story. During my college program, I was at Space Mountain, and when the ride would go down, we'd have to create what were called apology walls. It's any time you go outside of a ride and you see a bunch of cast members saying, yeah, unfortunately, the ride is down, or no, we don't know when it's gonna reopen. And in fact, when we tell you that, that we don't know when it's going to reopen, 99.9% .9 of the time, we're actually telling you the truth, because we might not have even been told why the ride went down ourselves. We literally are going, I, I don't know. It's down, it's broken. So. During one of those occasions, I was approached by two men, and these guys were probably 60, 70 years old, fairly older. They both had these ECVs, the electric convenience vehicles, little scooters you see going around the park, and they came over to ask some questions. And I said, all right, you know, it was very normal to have guests come over and ask about why the ride was down or this and that. I go to explain, yeah, unfortunately, Space Mountain is down today. I'm, I'm sorry about that. We hope to be up in a couple hours, but we don't know the time. And they said, oh, that's no problem. We actually had questions about what it was like being a cast member, to which I kind of lit up. Obviously, I like telling these stories because here you are listening to me tell one right now. And I was like, ah, what would you like to know? And they said, well, what about the Utilidors? That is the underground like city that's underneath the Magic Kingdom where a bunch of the operations go to run the park. And I was like, oh yeah, well, you might have heard this, you might have heard that. We do have underground operations. This can go here, it's how we move trash and food and we kind of keep the magic alive, right? This used to be a big secret for Disney, but now, I mean, Disney themselves even does tours underground where you can actually go and see underneath the Magic Kingdom. I highly recommend it. I did it before I was a cast member and it was a fantastic, fantastic tour, gave you some really cool behind the scenes and kind of let you know how crazy the operations have to be to make sure that the park runs as smoothly as possible. Well, they asked some questions here and they asked some questions there and they were like, hey, so we know you guys aren't really allowed to say it, but how often do you go to like the playrooms? To which I said, what do you mean a playroom? And they were like, oh, we know you can't acknowledge this, but like, you guys have all the characters down there and they do meet and greets. To which I thought, oh, did they mean like, we do special character meet and greets just for cast members? And I was like, oh, well yeah, on certain times like Christmas or 4th of July or something, it's sometimes normal for Mickey to be down in the Utilidors and say hi to people or give like a little surprise because they know it's gonna be a busy day or maybe there's a special event. They could be giving out cupcakes, they could whatever. So I was like, oh, I, I guess I get what you're saying, right? And the guy was like, no, 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 no. We don't mean meeting the characters. They're like, we mean, meeting up with the characters. Um, so yes, they were wondering at what times we would go underground and have adult relations with some of the characters of Disney. As you know, this does not happen. There is not a dedicated room under the Magic Kingdom for that to happen. That's crazy. It's crazy, not to be mean to them, but I mean, that's crazy. So I was like, yeah, guys, that doesn't happen. I didn't call them crazy in the moment, but I was thinking it. And I was like, that's, that's not, that's not. And they said, oh, no, no, look, we get it. We get it. Like we're furries ourselves. You don't have to be embarrassed about going to these parties. Like we know some people prefer Mickey or some people prefer one of the Zootopia characters. And they're like, we love Nick Wilde and all this. And I was like, oh, okay. To which they immediately said, well, my name's Silver. This was a man that had a big silver beard. And he goes, and this is Fox. This is Red Fox. So Red Fox and I have been on our journey for a long time. And we really love exploring new characters. We've been in fact thinking about joining Disney and becoming cast members so that we can join in on these adult play times. I said, oh no, oh no. Uh, so again, guys, yeah, those don't, those don't happen. I don't know how to better explain this. I wish I could find a better way to say this and explain this. And they're like, it's okay, look. Disney is very open to furries. And I said, okay, my mind is trying to process this. Disney, I do agree, is very open to all people. I think that visiting the parks is probably one of the most inclusive places you can go. In fact, Disney added their fifth key. We've got safety, courtesy, show, efficiency. Oh man, my cast member was slipping there. Safety, courtesy, show, efficiency, and then Disney added inclusion, which is the key that kind of wraps it all together. But it's not that inclusive. In fact, I don't know of any of the parks that are that inclusive underground for their employees, but they were very, very adamant about this. In fact, going on to say, well, you know that Walt Disney was the world's first furry. And I said, you are gonna have to explain this to me. At the same time, I'm going, 
Please tell me the ride is open. Please tell me the ride is open. It's still not open. Please, anyone, call me and tell me the ride is open. Tell me you need me to come back there and help run the ride, please. They didn't. This was a very long 20 minute conversation to which you can only move so far and they just scoot back over and they go, oh yeah, we can stand over here. And you go, oh, there's no escape. Please, my break, my lunch, anything. So they were like, yeah, Walt Disney was the world's first publicly acknowledging furry. He came out and made Mickey Mouse, which is a human and an animal character who has relations with other human and animal characters. And I said, oh no, this is just getting worse. Okay. And they were like, wow, and Disney's really kept going with it. And they said, at one point, we thought that Disney was kind of stepping back from that and that they weren't going to really be accepting of us in society. And then they made Zootopia, which if you've seen the Zootopia movies, you know that it's basically a bunch of animals that live in a world and everyone can be a different animal. And the big part of the story, while it's speaking on kind of racism and different ways that people have stereotypes, they interpreted this as, well, we're all furries in our own way. And we're in this big, beautiful city world of Zootopia. Um, so eventually I just go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, please end quickly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, please end this conversation quickly. And uh, then there is a ring. Um, we can have, there's a phone that's right outside of Space Mountain that we can hear that we usually get a call from the tower saying, hey, the ride's ready to reopen. The second I heard that ring, I said, oh, I gotta go, gotta go check that. Bolted. I picked up the phone and very quickly was like, look, coordinators, I, there's no fast way for me to explain this to you. There are, there are men out here that are trying to tell me their sexual preferences and they can have their sexual preferences, but this is, I don't want to know. I don't want to hear about it. And I don't want to keep explaining that the Utilidors is not an adult strip club for characters. Please help me. And they were like, oh, yep, come inside. That's not what we were calling for, but go ahead. So I go back out, try to, try to be nice, not to be like I was abandoning them. And I said, oh, yep, I'm getting called inside, guys. And they said, okay, have a nice day. Come to Disney World, you know, to a certain level, be your true self. But there's a certain level of yourself at which I personally did not need to know about when I was standing outside of the building. I hope they had a wonderful trip and I don't know who, however many people else they talked to. If anyone else had a conversation with them or someone similar and you have had to defend the Utilidors, a spot where we store trash and clean up stuff and move around operations. If you ever had to explain that there's not a strip club down there, please leave it in the comments or message me because I can't be the only one that had to do this. You get some weird conversations with guests. It makes for some very funny and some very memorable and some very odd stories. But I'll tell you what, when I first started working for Space Mountain, my coordinator said, by the time you're done with your CP, you'll be able to write a book. And they were not wrong. And that's a cast member story.